My name is Tarmac, and this is your Game Industry News Wrap-Up for the week of April 16th, 2016. Id Software has posted via Twitter that they have sorted out some issues with Doom and it will now have an uncapped frame rate for PC users. Personally, I'm not happy at all because that means Doom 2016 won't be as cinematic as Doom 3. Welcome to 2016 Id Soft. Now get rid of loadouts and give us gameplay and weapon acquisition that actually resembles the Doom brand, not COD or Halo. A leak on NeoGAF describes a good chunk of information relating to the Nintendo NX and how some of the features will function. The major piece is that the controller, as many have expected, is a screen controller. If the leak is true, the controller doesn't need to do any local processing, but can be connected to your home NX unit, whether on local network or even Wi-Fi out and about, and will be able to stream gameplay to the controller for remote playback. The leaker also had some detail to give about the new GPU powering the NX, which should, again assuming the leak is true, be similar in power to the power level of the also rumored PS4K upcoming Sony console. At a certain point, when you're comparing one rumored leak to another rumored leak, and trying to square it away as reliable information, I think you're coming close to experiencing a brain aneurysm. Dark Souls 3, effectively the fifth game in the Souls series and first following the illegitimate spawn of Hayao Miyazaki and HP Lovecraft that is Bloodborne, has sold in excess of an astounding 500,000 copies on Steam alone. This information is courtesy of SteamDB. I have to say, for a game series steeped in apparent difficulty, community toxicity over scrubs, and niche gameplay, it's doing really well. Beat the hell out of Street Fighter V, that's for sure. Though granted, that's because it's a complete game. Seriously, Capcom, it's April. Why is your February release game not feature complete yet? Also, from software, thanks. I love getting my ass handed to me by a boss, only to scrape out a victory and then receive a cutscene for my efforts that simply shows that I've only fought half of the boss fight and must now deal with the rest. Much love. Overwatch had a beta weekend going on over the last couple of days, and amid my complaints of not being able to get review code or closed beta access, I did get into this stress test. It's always nice to play through a Blizzard game during long beta testing because the game changes so much. I don't change at all though, I'm still terrible at shooters, but damn it, I'll keep trying. I learned persistence from Dark Souls, so there's nothing Overwatch can do to hurt me. A software hack appropriately titled Revive has made it possible to play Oculus Rift exclusive games on the HTC Vive VR headset in an unsurprising turn of events. Oculus responded to the ExtremeTech.com article on the hack by saying that, quote, This is a hack and we don't condone it. Users should expect that hacked games won't work indefinitely as regular software updates to game, apps, and our platform are likely to break hacked software, end quote. Sounds like a threat to me. Oculus is doing everything it can to make sure that the Rift takes off like Betamax, Laserdisc, and HD DVD. Former head of Rockstar North, Leslie Benzies, is suing the company claiming constructive dismissal or being forced out. He claims that they owe him $150 million in royalties. While I don't normally care about executive drama, an interesting tidbit in the lawsuit indicates that Grand Theft Auto V has brought in at least $500 million from microtransactions. For a low-cost endeavor compared to the cost of making the game itself, and with granted likely substantial transaction fees for payment processing, that's still a disgustingly huge number. I'd like some royalties. That'd be nice. It's odd for me to refer to video game sites as traditional media, but there it is. Well-known traditional game site Gamefront will be shutting down on April 30th. For those keeping track, Defy Media owns Gamefront as well as the late Game Trailers site. If you're a betting gamer, and I am, expect to see a Patreon and YouTube transition announcement from Yahtzee over at The Escapist within the next few months. Defy owns them too, and these big game sites be dying. This has been your Game Industry News Wrap-Up for the week of April 16th, 2016. I'm Tarmac. Thanks for watching.